Hey everyone, how's it going today? And hopefully everyone is having a great happy holidays because in today's video, as the title suggests, is, is I really wanna just talk about five things that I think every single person here should do with their money before the year ends because obviously the very, very end of the year is kind of a very, very big deadline or a hard time stamp that a lot of people are trying to get like the last minute couple of things that they have to do with their money done before the year actually physically ends. Now I will say, is, is that even if you're watching this in the future, it is not too late per se. Um, this video obviously has a level of time urgency to it. That's why I highly recommend watching through if you're watching this, you know, in December of pot, particularly any year, because you can literally do this in 2024, 2025, six, seven, it really goes on and on. But these are just some things that I think every single person should know to try to do before the year ends, before it becomes too late to do some of these things, at least for this particular economic cycle, or not economic cycle, but this particular year, you know, the cycle of every single year. So we are gonna get right to it, but as always, if you guys enjoy videos like this, remember to smash the like button to share support, consider subscribing, hitting the bell, and feel free to leave a comment about honestly just really anything, maybe what you think about this video by the end of this video. So with that being said, let's get this video rolling and started. So the first thing that you should really look into doing with your money before the year ends is probably to try to pay off as much debt as possible. And I'm also going to leave timestamps on the bottom so you can kind of skip around, but I'm going to go into each one in detail. So I do highly recommend watching through every single minute. But of course, you guys can decide if you're on a time crunch. But the first thing really is about trying to pay off as much debt as you possibly can. There are obviously some kinds of debt that you're not going to be able to pay off on the spot. Examples of this is probably things such as like mortgages, maybe auto loans, it's going to be a little bit difficult because we're talking about debt that happens to be like in the hundred thousand dollars range, at least for, you know, housing mortgages and stuff like that. But certainly at least smaller debt, such as like credit cards, parts of your student loans, if you have any student loans, auto loans, anything in that particular world, I think it would be a really, really great idea to start to pay it off just because, or not even just start to pay it off, but to continue or even completely pay it off because the reasoning why is, is so that when you go into the next year, in this particular case, 2024, but again, if you're watching this in the future, 2025, six, seven, eight, you're able to now start the year with a clean slate. And I think that's one of the most important things um, to be able to maybe try to accomplish and try to make as a goal before the year ends. So you don't have to worry about that in the coming future. You know, you can start, you can start with zero credit card debt when you enter into January of next particular year. Now, the second thing that I think is really maybe important to consider doing before the year ends is to try to plan for the following year and specifically to create a budget. So you want to really, what you want to do is, is that every single, and this is something that you can do anytime, but just particularly next year, I think is that every single year, people's financial situation obviously changes, right? You might get a new job, you might make more money, maybe something pops up so you actually have to spend more money. Like for example, maybe you have children, maybe debt increases, maybe you upgrade your lifestyle. So the idea really behind this one is that it's really, really important to be able to try to budget your money as much as possible. So how can you possibly, or how can you physically actually do this? I would say one of the best ways to do it is to try to figure out if you're able to buy a journal or maybe you already have a journal of some kind. Take out a journal or a piece of paper and just write down all of the things that you have to potentially buy every single month. You want to be able to track down your expenses, such as like your bills, your mortgage, if you have a mortgage, your bills, electricity, cable, if you have cable, um, housing, everything in that world, food, obviously, because you know, there's, it's one of the biggest expenses that no one can escape. Uh, and anything in that particular world, um, enjoyment, social life, travel, all sorts of different things, really try to plan out how much money you hope to be able to spend dedicated to each of these particular categories every single month so that when you go into the new year, you're able to now better track your money and adjust accordingly based off of how much money you expect to spend in a particular year or month by month basis. Now, the next one is really, really more applicable to if you are someone that invests in the stock market, and this one is definitely time urgent, somewhat time urgent. So that's why I do highly recommend, you know, really being able to focus on this one. But it's really that if you are someone 
that lost money in the stock market in some way, shape or form, or maybe part of your portfolio suffered, you know, a red amount of money, uh, consider doing something called tax loss harvesting. So what this really is, is, is that essentially every single year, you are able to sell a certain amount of stock that you had lost money in to be able to write off on your taxes. This is a very, very time sensitive thing because you have to do it by the very, very end of this year. Because if you don't do it by the end of this year, it's going to count for the following year and the following year your you know financial situation investing situation might be relatively different it is particularly especially true for this particular year if you're watching this around release date in 2023 because we actually suffered a really really difficult market this particular year especially in the first half i do know obviously the second half of this year we started to see a lot of stocks start to come back and rally back um, upwards, such as like Nvidia, Roku, Coinbase, all these stocks, you know, really started to see a recovery. But a lot of stocks in the very, very beginning of the year, specifically the first half of the year from like January to the better part of the middle of summer, actually went down very, very drastically. And there are still some stocks that are still relatively down, such as like Disney, Target, that haven't really fully recovered yet. So if you see any particular stocks inside of your portfolio that are maybe, you know, going downhill or maybe you've already lost a lot of money, consider them to sell them, consider selling them so that when you enter into the new year first off is that you can write off a lot of these losses as a tax write-off so you don't have to pay as much money in taxes and second of all it also makes your portfolio look a lot cleaner so that when you go into the next year you can start to kind of remove these you know losses and maybe start on a clean slate just like what I've mentioned with your credit card bill the idea really is to try to start fresh and try to start fresh so that you can kind of set yourself up for the best financial situation as much as possible and I think that's really probably the third thing to really be able to mention. Now, the fourth thing on our list is going to be, interestingly enough, something of an extension of investing, and it's going to be to contribute to your retirement accounts. So things such as like your 401k, your Roth IRA, definitely. Now, I will say one thing, though, is, is that this definitely is not as time urgent as investing in the stock market, because a lot of this stuff, the deadline to contribute to things such as like your Roth IRA is technically when taxes are due, not necessarily when the year ends. But it is still just one of those things that if you do have the opportunity to do it, I highly recommend being able to just do it as early as possible. This is actually especially true right now in this particular time period because we are expecting the stock market to rally next year. A lot of people know that because of the situation that we currently are in, because interest rates are now starting to, you know, because, the, and you've probably seen a lot of videos about this, you know, titled the reversal of the stock market, the coming back, recession canceled. I made a couple videos also talking about this, so definitely check out those videos. I'll put it at the very end screen. You can watch it after this video. But the idea really behind it is that right now at the time that we are currently living in, it is expected that entering into 2024, stocks are very likely going to start to rally again soon, especially when they start to cut interest rates once again. Because once they start that economic cycle of cutting rates again, it's expected that as interest rates go down, just like how when interest rates went up, stocks dropped. So when interest rates go down, stocks are expected to rally. So because of that reason, it's really particularly useful if you were able to make moves as soon as you possibly can. And I think that right now is probably one of the best times to be able to look into it. So by doing this and contributing to your investment accounts, not, not your investment account, well, yes, your investment account, but specifically your retirement accounts, that is one of those things that you can potentially set yourself up to do right now at this current time. There is obviously a limit to how much you can contribute to your Roth IRA every year, but just max it out, um, buy good stocks, and then go from there and we'll see how things happen. And then the last thing that you should really consider spending your money on is something that actually goes a lot deeper and we're gonna explain in a little bit, but as the surface answer is, is to consider just taking some of that money and spending it on gifts. 
just literally spending it on gifts for your family, your friends, for people, maybe your coworkers, your bosses, just everyone around you. The deep side to this actually is really because it, it's not just because it's something that's really fun, although it's true, you know, like obviously, hopefully you guys do enjoy giving gifts to other people. But the real concept behind this really is that it kind of goes on to the idea of business. In business, they say that the amount of money you make is often tied to the amount of value that you can contribute to a particular circle. So this does not necessarily mean that you're trying to give money to people or not not give This does not necessarily mean that you're trying to give gifts hoping for something in return But what it is to say is is that it's just a really good habit to have Because a lot of times they say is, is that the more you can put out into the world The more likely things are gonna just come back to you as well when you put more value into the world more money comes back to you and then similarly when you put more love into the world by giving gifts to other people you also receive a lot of love back in return in most situations at least that seems to be the at least that that's the case most of the time so the bottom line behind it is is between all of the five things that we mentioned you know invest save for retirement budget your money um and also of course just you know prepare and give some gifts to people, you know, because it is the holidays after all. And I think it's just a very nice, courteous thing to do. So with that being said, that's pretty much what I really wanted to cover, the five things that you should consider doing with your money before the year ends. So if you guys hopefully enjoyed that video, consider smashing the like button, consider subscribing, hitting the bell. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment, stay safe, stay well, and hope to see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much again. And also, of course, happy holidays.